Yeah, well, there, there are reports in the Sunday newspapers referring to a former apartheid cabinet minister, which I can't discuss in only four minutes. It's very complicated, although I must tell you I'm not surprised. But I am surprised at this month of August, because every year it is Women's Month, and every year it has Women's Day in it, and every year I say to myself, why? Nothing changes. I mean, up to last year, Women's Month was just ruled by the ANC Women's League, who of course had Jacob Zuma as their great hero. And you can't combine the two, Jacob Zuma and Women's Day. But this year it's different. You know, people are involved. It's not just politicians. And my little granddaughter, Latoya Osavania, who is in the seventh grade, she and her school friends, boys and girls, are marching on the 9th to Pretoria and the Union buildings to celebrate what women did in 1956. And you know, I was in Pretoria on the 9th of August, 1956. Well, I wasn't marching with them. Mechitz, they were enemies of the state. They were, they were, they were the maids and the, and the, and the housekeepers and some, some white women also, I think the Jews, they were always mixed up with the wrong side, always under, under apartheid. And I was so excited because on the next day, on the 10th of August, my film, my new film, Macy van Mee Drome, was going to open in Pretoria. And I was going to go up to the Union buildings to have a photograph taken for the Transvaal newspaper of me and the Prime Minister Stradom. But we couldn't get to the Union buildings because these women were just marching everywhere in twos and threes. They weren't allowed to march in fours and fives because that was against the law. And so a police escort took me to the President's, uh, to the Prime Minister's residence, Libertas. And so I posed for a picture with Prime Minister Stradon. And only now do I realize the importance of that march. I mean, it is here. These women had a petition that said, we, the women of South Africa, have come here today. That's to the Union buildings. We African women know too well the effect this law has upon our homes and children. That was the law forcing black women to have passbooks since 1952. We who are not African women, there's no witness in it, know how our sisters suffer. For to us, an insult to African women is an insult to all women. We voters and voteless call upon your government not to issue passes to African women. We shall resist until we have won for our children their fundamental rights of freedom, justice, and security. Hi, this was in 1956, and it could have been yesterday. So has nothing changed? Yes, so much has changed. In the next few days, everybody is going to be aware of these brave women who actually worked, walked, and walked, and walked in spite of the fear and made us realize how important it was that all of us have to be protected by a constitution that we now have. And my little granddaughter is leading the march. And I must say, it is by opgewonden. I'm really very, very moved. But I'm worried. I'm worried there are things in the newspapers over this weekend that you need to read as well. And it needs to be talked about. But four minutes is too short. So let's find out what the headlines say about Jacob Zuma. Jacob Zuma took cattle from poor farmers and became a rich farmer. Ooh, he is a kabouter. <laughs> Evita, Evita, and you know what we mean. Evita, Evita, always on the scene. Evita, but say the note, Evita should be queen. <laughs>